good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I'm in the mood to make a teeter totter in code blocks. So let's get cracking. Before we start, friends, real quickly, I am on my Tinkercad webpage. I have got a series of multi lesson projects, and one of them is the awesome playground. So, in this series of lessons, I have got a teeter totter made with the traditional editor. Friends, I thought it'd be fun to also show you how you can make it with code blocks. Friends, no matter which way you choose, there is a ton of room for you to make yours absolutely epic and have an awesome compilation when you're done. Switching to code blocks means that we click down here, click create new code block, and then also we hit new design. Now this one's going to be called teeter totter. I always start up here, teeter totter, and it doesn't hurt to have your initials after it. Now when we build with code blocks, we need to create objects. And the first object I want to create is the board. So we rename it, I'm going to type board, and then we're going to build this with the shape called a rectangle. When you bring the rectangle out, extend it, and then we need to pick our measurements. I'm going to make my length 120, and I'm going to make my height 4, and when we hit play, you'll see it draw right over here, and that is a good looking teeter-totter board. I do want it to be rounded, so that way there are less kids getting splinters. Once again, once you make the change, you need to hit play to see the adjustment. The other thing I wanted to let you know is that this always draws from 0, 0, so you can see half of it is below 0. So we are going to instantly modify this with a move command, and we need to move it up, which is Z. Since our height is 4, we're going to raise it up to now when you hit play, you'll see it at 0, 0 on the work plane. Now a teeter-totter always has a cutout for the person's legs. We're going to do that with the cylinder shape. When you bring the cylinder out, we need to make it a hole. This is how it's going to cut. Right now if you hit play, you'll see that it lands right in the center. We're going to fix that with another move. Let's move ours to the right, which is along X. And let's see what it looks like if we hit 10. And I'm also going to change the radius to 8. So when we hit play, you can see that lines up pretty good. I'm going to bring it towards me. So since this is 0, 0, the Y's this way are negative. So I'm going to put down negative 40. And let's see how far down it comes. Since my board was 120, I'm guessing that's pretty good. And I do like that. So let me show you what this looks like real quickly if we group it. So I'm going to just temporarily put that there. You can see this is going to have the seat where the person sits and the leg cut out. I think I want to change that to 11 over. And then also I think I'm going to make this 7 and hit play. This is the nice thing about code blocks is you can just adjust your code till you're happy. I'm going to bring the group down here and I'm going to duplicate this. So if I want another one at negative 40, so then all I have to do, friends, is switch to a negative x. And because of the 0, 0 arrangement of code blocks, I can put this back together. And when we hit play, I have just cut out both sides of the board. Let's break this apart again. Do another duplicate. And if we went negative 40 for the first two, Guys, this is so awesome. All you do is go positive 40 for the second two and hit group. When we hit play, boom, we have now got a teeter-totter board all built just like that. We need to add the handle for this, so let's create that in a new object. I'm going to put the handle up above the board. I want it to be first. We're going to rename it, and we're going to call it handle. The reason we do this is later we're going to group these and you've got to have the part exist before you group it. We're going to build our handle with cylinders, so let's bring out a cylinder. When we drop it in, I'm going to move this over to the left so I have room to see this. And I want to change this radius to 3. I'm going to leave the height for a second and I'm just going to hit play. So friends, that's a little wide and I'm going to speed this up. So I'm going to change it to 2 and hit play. And that looks like the right size for our handle. I'm going to change this to 24. And I'm picking an even number because that way it's easy to divide. Since I want it to be connected to the board, I need to change Z to 12, which is half of 24. When we hit play, you can see that is now lifted up. I'm going to duplicate that. 
and I want the second one to only be 10. I'll leave this height for a second. I'm going to make it a different color so you can tell which is which. And then I also want to rotate it. I know I want to rotate it 90 degrees, and I'm going to switch it to Y. When we hit play, check it out. There is our pink handle. It is not the right height, so we're going to change that move. Let's make it 25, and we're just guessing and testing. That's pretty close. I'm going to try instead 23, see if I like that better. That is a good spot to put the handle, but now it looks too high. So let's go back and adjust our numbers. Let's do 20, and let's do 10, and let's take this back to 20 as well. Now let's see if that looks like a better spot. I think that's pretty realistic. I think this is too skinny though, so let's make it 14 and see if we like that. Boom, that is a pretty neat handle. So what we're gonna do is group it, pick a color. I'm gonna choose white because I think that looks good with mine. Now I have got a handle and I've got a board. Let's go back to the board, making sure it is below the handle. So the handle has to happen first. Let's break this apart. And now let's go to modify and bring in a copy of the handle. To find the handle, you go to data. There it is. And then we just need to move it to the correct location. Back to our modify, back to our move. And we're gonna move it along Y. I'm gonna see what happens if I move it 30. And I'll bring the group back up here. I've got my speed fast when we hit play. Boom, that is perfect. Friends, this is what's so cool is once you figure out your numbers, you know the other one just needs to be negative 30. And when you hit play, you have just designed your very own teeter-totter. This is awesome too. This is... And then friends, we need to delete the real object so that one is not sitting there in the center, which looks kind of goofy. So we hit delete handle and we hit play boom you have just got a teeter-totter designed just like that the next thing we need to build is the wedge now once again i'm making sure the handle is above this i'm going to hit collapse blocks so that way it's easier to see what i'm doing and i just want to emphasize this has to be above our next part we're going to build we can put it down below here and it's going to be what i call the wedge and this will be what it sits on we're going to build the wedge with the shape called the roof real quickly I'm gonna extend it it says a length of 20 let's hit play and see what that looks like it's decent but it's aimed the wrong way so we're gonna modify it with a rotate and we'll leave it at 90 degrees and hit play and boom we want to rotate around Z let's hit play again that's what we want it to look like now we need to raise it up to zero let's try that with a 10 and see if that works or if it's five it might be five, but we're just using guess and check. It was definitely five. So now it is above zero. I want to make it taller, so I'm going to scale it. This way we're only doing Z, and I want it to be twice as tall. Notice now it's below zero, so instead of five, I'm going to try ten. And bam, that is perfect. I want to put the piece that it rolls on. We're going to do that with a cylinder. Back to your shapes. Bring out your cylinder. All we're going to change is the size of three, and I'm also going to make it a different color. When you hit play, you can see that's down below. So we need to bring out a rotate, and we need to bring out a move. I believe this is going to rotate around Y again. So if we hit play, you'll see it's right along the edge. And now we just need to move it up. Let's see what happens if we move it up 20. Boom, that is exactly where we would want it for our teeter-totter. I'm gonna hit create group, hit play, and now we can assemble our final teeter-totter. Once again, I'm gonna collapse all the blocks since they're all working. I'm gonna make sure that they're all up here so they can be used in order. Handle first, then the board, then the wedge. And we're going to create the final object down below called teeter-totter. Our teeter-totter is going to consist of a few cool parts. The first one it's going to have is the board. So we're going to go to data and we're going to go to board. So once again, we're going to add a copy. 
The second object we need to add is the wedge. So we're going to drop that in. And then we also need to always remember to delete the original objects so they're out of the way. So I'm going to bring out that delete object and I'm going to duplicate it. And under data, we need to delete the board and we need to delete the wedge. Now for this board to be in the right spot, we need to move it. Now this is kind of fun. You can drop the move in between it. Let's guess that it has to be 23 high. And when we hit play, check it out. Our teeter-totter is raised up and our other parts are removed. Let's instead try 22. And let's also rotate it. We are going to bring out a rotate. And since this is Y, we know it needs to rotate on Y again. And let's see what happens if we just rotate it 30 degrees. <laughs> I was wrong. That needs to be a rotate on X, which is fun. You can see that it is below the ground, which is too much. So let's change it instead to 15 degrees. Friends, we have built a sweet teeter-totter, but it doesn't touch the ground. Let me show you how we're going to fix this. First, right-click and clean up blocks. So now the handle and the board and the wedge and the teeter-totter are all in a row. Now what we're going to do is solve this by adjusting the length with a variable. Move to your math and create a variable, and we're going to rename it length. We want to set that length to be more than 120. So right now I'm going to try 140, and then I'm going to bring out the length variable, and I'm going to put it in my project. So friends, watch this. When we hit play now, our board is instantly longer. Friends, now that we've got this length variable, we can make this move automatic as well. What you need to do is bring out a piece of math. And then because this is negative 40, I'm going to start with 0 minus. And then I'm going to bring out another piece of math. And I want to change it to divided by. And we're going to find the length variable. And it'll be the length divided by 2. So this is going to get us the half. And then we need to subtract the length divided by 2 from another amount. So we're bringing out a third piece of math. And we're going to do link divided by 2. And then we're going to do minus. And I'm going to try 15. So if we grab this entire chunk of math, now our math says, and this is important to have your order of operations, 0 minus link divided by 2. And then we're going to subtract 15. And then we'll put that right here. Notice we had a negative number. And now we're going to end with another negative number. If we hit duplicate, we can drop that in, and now when we hit play, let's see how our new math-oriented one turns out. That is pretty darn sweet. It moved down where it was supposed to be. Instead of 15, I'm going to change that to 10 and see if I like it even better, or maybe it needs to be 20. 10 is going to move it out towards the end. That is not good at all. Let's change that to 20, and I think that's going to be our perfect piece of math. So it nudged it automatically right where we expected it to be. So friends, this had to be negative. These have to be positive. So we can just duplicate this chunk of math. See that green line? We're skipping the 0 minus. And then we're going to drop this one right here. And I'm going to duplicate by the minus sign and drop this one where that 40 is. Now when we hit play, friends, our parts move exactly like they're supposed to even if we change the measurements. So you can see this is not touching yet. I'm going to instead try 150 and hit play. It's still not touching, but now it's close enough to the right size that we can come down here and let's just change our rotation. Let's try 20 for the rotation and see if that gets it perfect. Boy, that is close. Let's try 18. That, my friends, I think is close enough that you can accept it. You can, of course, tinker with those numbers till your heart's content. The last thing we need to do is fix where we put our handles. I'm going to make these automatic as well by duplicating this math, dropping it where the 30 was, duplicate that, and set it down. 
And then friends, since this is the negative one, I'm gonna bring out one more piece of math and make it zero minus so that this one turns negative as well. If we hit play, we'll see how far these 20s are away. Those are not good, so let's subtract 30 and see if we like that better. And hit play. That, my friends, is pretty darn awesome. All right, everybody, so I'm gonna right click up here and I'm gonna do clean up blocks. That puts them in a nice row. You can see we added a variable, we built our board, we did it first with just numbers, but then we got smart and added math. And now our teeter-totter looks fantastic. When you're done with this, make sure you pick the colors you want. I want my wedge to be blue. I'm gonna hit play one more time and see if I like this. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. And then when you're ready to use it in your park, you can hit export as a part, and then it'll be available in the normal Tinkercad editor. I'm gonna name it teeter-totter or seesaw. I do not say anything about it. I could add tags. I never locked the part size. I'm going to save the shape and boom, it's ready to use in our regular Tinkercad playground projects. Alrighty friends, so I hope you had a ton of fun with this and you learned a little bit how you can make math do some of the calculations for you. Friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button and last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.